Okay, g'day folks, welcome. I've just been uh, sent a question where I was asked to, to simplify this, uh, uh, this sort of nasty looking expression involving indices. So let's have a look at this. There's a couple of different uh, uh, index laws at play here. So uh, I'm not going to go through all of the index laws in this video. If there's any uh, that you specifically want me to cover, drop me a comment uh, down below uh, or, or get in touch with me uh, via email or, or uh, uh, through Microsoft Teams. But in this question here, uh, I need to simplify this expression. So what have we got going on? Well, we've got a multiplication. So x to the power of 2 would be multiplied by y to the power of negative 2. Uh, we've got brackets, so uh, that uh, x squared uh, y to the negative 2 is in brackets and that bracket is being raised to a power and that power is negative. So we've got multiplications, negative powers, brackets and, an, and an, another negative power. Let's uh, look at the index laws that are involved. So with multiplication, uh, the, the applicable index law says that if I'm multiplying uh, two expressions with the same base, right? so they've got to be the same base in both scenarios, well, then, I'm, then I add my powers together. Is that happening in our problem? No, it's not. Because over here I've got a base of x, and over here I've got a base of y, and they're not the same. So I can't use this index law. Okay. Well, what else is going on? There's a negative power. Let's have a look at that one. Now, um, look, I'll, I'll write up the rule, but let me explain how, uh, how I think of this rule when, uh, when I come across it in a problem. Whenever I see a negative power, I think to myself, okay, uh, the thing with the negative power is on the wrong side of the vinculum, wrong side of the fraction line. So let's have a look. What, uh, what's the actual rule and how do we apply it? So the rule says that A to the power of negative n is equal to 1 over a to the power of n. So you have a look. It's got a negative n. It's on the wrong side of the fraction line. So, I, uh, so where's the b? You, see, you might say, oh, but hang on a second, Mr. B, there's no fraction line there. Well, there is. Every time I write a number, every number has got uh, a fraction line in it. So if I was to write the number, uh, say, uh, 7, well, there's a fraction line there. It's a, look, here it is here. Because 7 and 7 over 1 are the same thing. So a to the power of negative n and a to the power of negative n over 1 are the same thing. So that a to the n is on the wrong side of the fraction line. Now, uh, when it moves, uh, it doesn't leave a blank behind. Okay? So when the a to the negative n moves, it leaves a 1 in its place. So a to the negative n moves, it crosses the fraction line, comes down below, and when it crosses the fraction line, well then, now, uh, the, the sign on the power changes. Okay? So if it was a negative up here, when it crosses the fraction line, the sign is going to change, it's going to be a, a, a positive n. And the same in reverse. So a to the power of n here, if it crosses, now it doesn't matter which way it crosses, any time a term crosses, the fraction line, the sign on the power changes. Okay, so uh, a to the power of n when it, when it crosses the fraction line becomes a positive, and it leaves a one behind. Okay, now when it crosses the fraction line, it just multiplied by one, so it's just a to the power of n. Okay, so there's the rule that's at play here. How does it apply in x to the power of two times y to the power of negative two? Well, let's think about that. Now, the x has got a positive power, it's x to the power of 2, that's fine. The y has got a negative power, okay? It's not happy, it doesn't like a negative power, it's on the wrong side of the fraction line. Let's help it get home, let's help it get to where it belongs. So the x squared is happy exactly where it is, it can stay there. The y to the power of negative 2, that wants to cross the fraction line. So here it is, it's crossed the fraction line, and then the sign of the power changes. 
Okay, so x to the uh, power of 2y to the negative 2 is x squared over y squared. Well, this whole thing is to the power of negative 1. So there's another uh, index law at play now. Let's have a look at that index law. That index law says that uh, a, b to the n, or same index law, but uh, instead of with, multipl with multiplication, it's the same index law with division. a divided by b to the power of n. Uh, well, the, the two terms multiplying or dividing inside the brackets are both going to be raised to that same power. So a will be raised to the power of n, and b will be raised to the power of n. Okay, over here, a will be raised to the power of n, and b will be raised to the power of n. Okay, so this power somehow is going to be going on both of these terms, the x squared and the y squared. Well, that opens up another index law for us. So let's look at this, uh, uh, this one last one, and then we can just get back into solving our problem. So the last index law we need to look at, I'll get rid of all of this. The last index law we need to look at says that if I've got a to the power of n to the power of m, so uh, a power inside the brackets and a power right outside the brackets, uh, well the last index law tells us that we just multiply those two powers. Uh, look, you can actually see that, it's not just some law that some mathematician made up and they could have made up some other law. It must be that. Let me show you why. If I asked you, uh, what is uh, 2 to the power of 3? What does that mean? Well, 2 to the power of 3 means 2 times 2 times 2. It's 2 multiplied by itself 3 times. Okay. What if I wanted to raise that to the power of 4? So what if I wanted to do this? If I wanted to get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4. Well, that would be the same as me getting this and raising it to the power of 4. Okay, 2 to the power of 3 was 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 to the power of 4. Well, what does it mean to raise something to the power of 4? Well, it means to multiply something by itself four times. So it's going to be... 2 times 2 times 2, that's one of them, times 2 times 2 times 2, that's two of them, times 2 times 2 times 2, that's three of them, times 2 times 2 times 2, that's four of them. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 to the power of 4. Well, how many 2s have I got along here? Well, you can go through and count them. And you're going to find there's 12. But look at this. 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4. 3 times 4 gives me 12 as well. Okay. So I could have just multiplied those two powers and said 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 is 2 to the power of 12. And that's exactly what this law is saying. a to the power of n to the power of m is a to the power of n times m. Okay. So that law. let's put all of those laws together, everything that we've seen, and have a look at that question there. Okay, y to the power of negative 2, the y is on the wrong side of the, of the, uh, the, the vinculum, the fractional one. So that's x squared over y squared. To the power of negative 1. Well, what does the power of negative 1 do? Well, that's a set of brackets with a power on the outside. That power goes to everything inside the brackets. So that is x squared to the negative 1, y squared to the negative 1. Well, now I've got a, a power outside of a power. What happens then? Well, I multiply those powers together. So that's x to the power of negative 2 over y to the power of negative 2. Well, hang on, now I've got a problem because now I've got negative powers. Negative powers tell me that the term is on the wrong side of the fraction line. So let's take uh, those terms home, okay? 
So the x to the power of negative 2 needs to go below the fraction line, and the y to the power of negative 2 needs to go above the fraction line. They need to cross the fraction line so that the sign on the power will change. So y to the negative 2 goes up, it becomes y to the power of positive 2. x to the negative 2 goes down, it becomes x to the power of 2. Job done. Okay. There's our solution. Uh, let me know if that was helpful. Uh, like, uh, comment, let me know either way, uh, and I'll see you soon.